Okay, so one of the things I struggled with uh, when learning the new input system in Unity was finding an equivalent for uh, input.getKey, which uh, is just a little function that allows you to get the state of a key. So if I put uh, if input.getKey keycode space, then, and I, that was in the update function, then when I was holding space, uh, that would return true. So that way we knew the space key was held down and we could do logic based on that. Um, so I've got a scene here and you can see I've got like this public bool here, use old input system. So if I hold down space, see old input system, key is down and it's just spawning a load of gnomes. Um, or they're blocking that, they're blocking that message. So you can see that, you know, as I'm holding it down, every frame, uh, old input system, uh, the key is down. So in this case, the key is space and it's just spawning these gnomes. If I, however, uncheck this and we use the new input system and then I hit space, See, new input system, key is down, it's the exact same functionality, every frame, it's checking to see whether the key's held down, and then it's spawning these gnomes based on that. Um, so let me just show you how this is all set up and how I've kind of got this working. So if we go into our project here and go into script, you see I've got a player controls input action asset. Um, and I've just got an action map called player, and then action keys, I've got a space key, which is just the space key on the board. The action type for this is pass through and the control type is axis and it's the axis bit that's kind of important here. Um, that's what makes this way of doing it work. So if you, so once you've saved the asset, you can uh, generate the she, she sharp, she sharp, she should, she should. So you can generate the C sharp class uh, based on that input action asset and that generates this uh, class here called player controls. And then I've just got my input tutorial script here. So let's just open that up. Oh, that was hot. Oh, God. Here we've got our player controls. We've made a new instance of our player controls and we've enabled them. And that allows us to use the new input system uh, through code. So in my update function, I've got old input system and new input system. And then just to check here, that, that was that bool uh, to see which version of the input system I wanted to use. Um, so this is the code for the old input system. This is how you would do it normally. So you'd say that if input.getKey, and you see that this returns true whilst the user holds down the key identified by the key code enum parameter, in this case, key code space. At this current time, it's just tracking, um, it's just to add a bit of delay between spawning the gnome so we didn't just spawn a thousand very quickly. In this case, I think whilst the key was held, it was spawning one every half a second. Um, but yeah, you can see that if input.getKey keycode.space, then print old input system keys down, and then based on that timer, spawn uh, the gnomes. And you can see that it's not actually that much extra line of code. It's just one extra line of code to get the same functionality as input.getKey. You don't need to sign up to any events or anything like that. Um, sort of in the new input system, you've got like triggered, performed, cancelled, and you can subscribe to those events to do stuff based on the state of the key. There isn't one that's very simply just held. Um, so what we've got here is a bool and I've just called it is space key held that can be called anything that you want uh, and this equals so player controls dot player dot space key dot read value float so this player controls is the player controls that's what we named our input action asset and what the C sharp class was called uh, player that's what that's our action map and the actual action is the space key so you can see that here you've got uh, player controls player space key read value float. So we're reading the value of the axis. The way the axis works is if your key is held and it's set to that axis type, uh, whilst it's fully held, it'll be one. If it's uh, not touched at all, it'll be zero. And then for example, um, a trigger on an Xbox controller, for example, if you're holding it halfway down, it'll be 0 0.5, etc. With a key on the keyboard, it's just on or off. So it's either going to be zero or one. To allow kind of a bit of lenience there, um, that I've put it as 0.1f. So if we're holding down the key and that axis is greater than 0.1f, which it should be, it should be one when the key's held, then this bool will be true. If it's not held, therefore the axis will be zero, then this is gonna be false. And that's exactly what we're getting from here. So we're getting a bool. So it returns true whilst the user holds down the key. This is gonna return true whilst the player holds down the key. And it's this float value from the axis that allows us to do that. So other than that, the, the code is exactly the same. So apart from obviously I'm printing new input system, 
it's the exact same code using the exact same values. The only thing different is I'm making this bool here. And you don't even really need this bool. You could just place this line of code just straight into there. And then it's the same amount of lines of code. But if you keep it in a bool, you can reuse that. You're not having to copy and paste this bit of co uh, code here. So yeah, that's just that. That's how that works. That's how I would do uh, the equivalent of input dot get key. And just as a little side tip, if you want to use the old input system and the new input system in uh, Unity, you can do that quite easily. When when you first install the new input system, it swaps over and you can't use the old input system. But if you go over to your project settings and choose uh, type in input, sorry, and then if you scroll down to active input handling. You can swap this to both, and then you can use the old input and the new input system. Uh, I'd probably advise against it. If you're going to learn the new input system, I'd learn the new input system. But there are some drawbacks to the new input system that, like, odd quirks. So maybe in your case, it would be best to use both. It's just good to know that that option's there. And it's worth noting as well, there are some preprocessor pre -processor directives available as well. Um, so you've got the if uh, enable legacy input manager and if enable input system. So you could separate your code that way. That allows you to kind of uh, move over to the new input system like gradually if you wanted to do that instead of just committing straight away. But yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I hope this video was useful. If you want to dig into this project just to kind of get the, that code, uh, you can do so over on my Patreon. I've got a link for that in the description below as well. And feel free to join uh, the Discord community, which I've also linked below. Um, it's just a place that I'm trying to gather people on the channel who are interested in 3D art or games design. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.